Pulse Rush 580 Day 4. So for this one, uh, you just have to fight SI7 Smuggler, and then you have to fight a leftover fork from the babbling book encounter at the very last boss, and we're artillery striking everything in between. So I've got a comp here that uses Mediv for that cleanup at the end, and we've maximized our artillery strikes, so we've got four of them in the comp. And then uh, Buon Somdi's here to help us out with the first encounter. So we're using pretty standard equipment here. Got the healing equipment on Gen, Reading Contender, Unstable Runes, Round of Drinks. I'm using Brightening Bracers because we don't want the extra cannon this time. And I just got Dragon's Mark on Voon, but it, whatever Voon has should be fine. And there's a lot of blue bosses, so this will be good for your artillery strike odds as well. Now on this fight, um, there's a little bit of RNG here at the very beginning. You can get a high fire anomaly like I just got, and um, it kind of depends what attacks these guys use on the first turn. So if you get double um, Reckless First Flight, that can be difficult. If you get double fire with high fire anomaly, that can be difficult. Uh, what we're going to do here, though, is bounce. And then he might try to focus fire me, or he might not. He, they do like to kill the arcane ward a lot of the time. So I would assume one shot will go there, but he might try to double them up. Um, there's not a lot you can do about that. So what I'm going to do is just taunt my Medivh to give him more HP. And then we'll see how this goes. So we did get a high fire anomaly here. Okay. So that's basically what I expected to happen. They tried to kill the weakest points and they killed the counter rune. But now we bounce. And now we should be pretty safe. So there's a couple things to still watch out for. And this time I'm going to position this way because there is a 5 speed cleave fire attack that they have. And this puts my counter rune on the edge because they like to kill that. And then it puts Gin in the middle so that if they, they do get one of those off, Gin will be the one tanking the damage. Okay, so he's using the 5 speed here, so we're just going to act slower than him when he does that. He's got 3 attacks. A 5 speed that does the adjacent if there's another dragon in play, which there's not because these are eggs. I, I'm pretty sure it does not recognize these as dragons, even though there's like a dragon hiding in one of them. Um, and then he's got the 6 speed single target, this dragon's breath. And then he's got the 9 speed reckless first flight, which will crack the eggs if you don't damage him at the same time. Also, you'll see this ability here is 8 speed. The reckless first flight is 9 speed. So if you get the 9 speed, you can't just pass you have to deal with it. So you need something to taunt to tank it, and you need um, you need to damage the whelp so it doesn't do the fire damage and crack the eggs. So you want to get out a Gin Summon when, whenever you can. And also keep in mind that this Gin Summon has this silver border, which means it does not activate the counter rune. So you can get this out on this turn and still act slower. We're also going to get a bird out, and we're just going to shoot him. And... Um, that will be countered because the Gin ability, again, is not counterable. It's not considered an ability. So you're generally going to want to operate with one Gin Summon and one Bird. And then on the six speed turns, we're just going to... So on the six speed turns, if you have a big enough Mage Guard, you can just like mage guard your arcane ward and act on those six speed turns um but you don't have to and there's nothing else we can do with these characters that's slow enough so you basically just shoot with one somdi on the six speed turns if you're being safe or you can also summon again summon if you don't have one out already that does not activate the counter rune. Okay, we got a 5 speed, and that's great. So this is sort of the, the cautious method 
Um, if you get a lower fire anomaly especially, you can um, like let your ward die even and just fight the thing. Um, but we got the 9 speed here, so it's going to hit our taunt, but we do have to just make sure that we damage it. So we can counter on these. So you actually want the 9 speed like pretty much as frequently as possible. And if you ever get that twice in a row, and your summon is on cooldown, you can just taunt something else with your Medivh. I like to taunt my Gen because he's really strong and he tends to have plenty of hit points to tank the hits. You could also taunt your bird if you needed to. You could even go for a Bonsomdi bounce and a Munit. So you have a lot of options on these turns. Um, but because this is a 9 speed turn, we can go ahead and get some ramp in here. And actually... I've leveled up this binding contract more, so it actually does more damage for me, so I'll just do that. Okay, and also when you're getting ready to finish this off, just make sure you don't like overkill it too much and end up like cracking both the eggs at the same time. Because you do want to just kill this, have the next thing come out. And then when you have just eggs, then you want to crack the eggs one at a time to kill them off very safely, so you don't die to uh... So this is 6 speed, so this is just a Bonsomdi and a summon. Let that get countered. Okay, so we get to do things at 6 speed now. Um, you can also cast this if you need to heal your Medivh. Um, because this one, you can see the contrast here, this one has that silver border with like the bronze bottom on it. This one is the full golden bronze circle. This means this is an ability. While well, this is just a summon that is not considered an ability. So this would activate the counter rune. It also activates the gin passive, where even if the board is full, where this summon, if the board is full, does not activate the gin passive. It only heals you if it actually summons the summon. So, a little bit of, uh... Tutorial about that functionality there. It's a little counterintuitive. Okay, it's a 6 speed. Alright, 5 speed. And unfortunately, with this safe method, you don't get to ramp your birds unless they use the Reckless First Flight. So it does take a bit longer, but as you can see, it's pretty much foolproof if you do everything right. Okay, so he's going to swing in here. Um, how much damage are we going to do? Is this like 100? 120? Or 40. So we should be good to shoot everything here. I'll smack there. I'm not too worried about the order. Okay, next well, so good he's using the 9 speed right away. So we can get some more ramp and damage in here. This is only like my second time running this, so I'm a little bit slow at the uh, decision making still. It's not like muscle memory. Okay, six speed, so that's just a blonde and again summon. Alright, nice, got a nine speed. Oh yeah, my, this one does more damage. 
for me anyway. So th this is obviously not a good farm day. Um, Another option that you have here is to not do these Gen Summons and just make birds. Um, so maybe that's the better option. Um, and then on the 9 speed turns, instead of nuking with your Mediv, you would just taunt either Gen or one of the birds to ensure your ward survives. Also you do want to kill your Bonsomdi off by the end here. So I'm actually going to vanity with him this turn because we got a melee attack coming in. Um, and we don't really care about losing him for those six speed turns anymore. So I do want this to hit him, but I need to damage it. So this is gonna do 400, that's too much damage. Um, it's gonna shoot with I don't want to taunt anything, so I'll just shoot with this, I guess. You can also just kill him with like a bird shot uh, instead of trying to set up one of these DL of Vanity turns. Oh, I messed it up anyway, so I'll have to kill him off the bird. <laughs> But you can very easily do that on this turn because there is no incoming damage. So let's just counter ourselves. And you can also ramp your birds as much as you want here, but you don't need to because these remaining guys only have like 150 HP plus the guy that does basically nothing. Um, I'm gonna crack that egg and kill him. Eh, I'll be safe. So if you do both of those, the second one will random target. Um, so I'm just going to kill the Bon Somdi now. And only crack one egg. You can also wait until you're on your very last egg. Before you um, kill off your Bon Somdi. And I guess I'll just get Edwin out here. Um, I'm going to crack one of these other ones because this one does annoying stuff. I'll leave it for last and it takes the longest. So let's do this one. These have such low hit points that you can just one shot them like this. I wasn't paying attention to which egg was which. At this point, uh, you can just crack all the eggs. There's no. S I, I don't need to be this careful. Uh, how do I want to do this? That'll do like a hundred. That'll kill him. Well, here, let's do it this way. I want the. I was trying to get the big crit to hit the uh, the guy inside the egg instead of like cracking the egg with the big crit. But it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we're just finishing this guy off, and he doesn't do like anything, he's just one damage to all enemies. <laughs> and you can even let that be countered if you want. Or let it be countered. And he only has 10 attacks, so you can even win Fury into him with your Edwin.
Right, and that should take care of the smuggler. All right, we got an artillery strike. That's great. Uh, Alaneth is going to be your best treasure here for getting through the last uh, boss quickly. We didn't get LNS. Don't really care about any of this stuff. So the artillery requirement's not too high for today. Uh, none of this should matter. No Alaneth. Yeah, the highest for any of the artillery strike is 200 HP, and they're all, three of them are blue, and then Moroz is green 180, so. Plus some overkill. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go with so you can use in so you can either do the Eudora Voon thing and bounce your Eudora and summon a break at the same time, and then just have like Voon stuck there which you can then kill off by taunting with Medivh. Or you can use Gin. I'll use the Gin method and show that. We're gonna kill off whoever the other one is. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So we got a high anomaly here, so we got 35,000 health, but that's not that big of a deal with birds. So we're just going to shoot at him. And and really, doing anything other than bird actions is kind of like a waste of time, but just make sure he gets countered. And then on the six speed turns, you can make taunts with Gen. But it does cost you board slots. Um, okay, we're going to counter there, and I guess he can swing. Job done. We don't want to kill off our Edwin yet, because we don't have a full board and a bird summon available. <laughs> Otherwise we'll just have to put another mercenary in play. Okay, so we're just acting slower than 4 speed. And everything auto crits. Um, if he gets countered and you're acting slower than him because of the passive on the fork, it does not count as acting for whatever reason. So, all right, so next bird summon and get rid of our Edwin. And these all crit, so we don't care about the order. So I'd like him to do a four speed turn, and then I can swing with my Edwin. So I'm gonna bird afterwards. Okay. So Edwin is gone.
Now, since we are filling the board with birds, we do not have space to summon again summon. So if we want to act on the six speed turns, we have to taunt our weakest bird and let it die. Uh, or you can taunt your again and let it die. But if you do that, then you can no longer act on six speed turns. Otherwise, you're sacrificing a bird every time you do, and you have to wait for a four speed to replenish that bird. So if I want to act this turn, I have to taunt here or taunt again. And also, if you do taunt again, um, you're going to have to go through your other two mercenaries the same way. So I usually just do the bird. And then it, once you run out of mercenaries to do that with, um, if he spams the six feet a lot, you end up just having to pass the turn over and over again, which is not great. Oh, right, so we do have mercenaries left. We do still have to do this. So we can just kill them off the same way on a six feet turn. I'm not sure what the frequency of the doom charge is. Um, so if you do kill off everything but Medivh, get that extra bird out, I don't know how many times you end up having to pass. Um, if you do keep the gin around, you guarantee that you never get stuck and you can still act every turn. So I'm not entirely sure what's the... Uh, best. I haven't tried killing off everything yet to see if you end up like having to pass a whole lot of doom charges because if you, if you don't want to pass your only option is to taunt a bird because you don't want to lose your counter rune and Medivh can't tank the hit so then you would have to throw a bird away but since we still have our gin here actually the order does matter now he's slow since we have our gen, he can make taunts for us. Yeah, he is spamming the six feet a lot, so... Um, actually, I have to pass this turn because I don't have a summon available. Alright, now we can get another bird out, and we'll just keep the bird around until he makes us taunt it. And if you wanted to, like, ramp that third bird more, you could pass the six speed turns more. Uh, and then at that point, you might as well, like, kill off your gen. I'm just gonna let it die, though. I don't like having to sit here and pass like 10 times in a row because my RNG is bad. I'll take the slower ramp for the guaranteed damage. <laughs> it does take a while. It ends up taking like 40 something turns with these level 30 birds uh, for the total run. It is very safe. And for the farm so far this week, it appears that day two is the best farm, either with the Malkazar comp that I had in the video for that day, or um, with the Bran Geddon comp that people have started using. The Malkazar comp is a little bit faster when you hit, but it's slower on the first fight. Um, it has the same artillery strike odds because you do keep Hook Tusk and Malkazar alive. Kill Belinda really quickly. Um, and you can actually kill Belinda a little bit faster than what I did in that video. Um, because you can 
Turn one, you just cutthroat your Malkazar and pass. Turn two, you cutthroat Belinda and make a summon with Gen. And then turn three, you just pass. And then turn four, you all realities and make a summon with Gen again. And then that kills Belinda and both your Hook Tusk and Malkazar, which gives you better treasure odds as well if you don't have enough artillery strike to one shot the uh, Yasharaj that's right after. So that one works really well, especially if you don't have a huge Geddon. If you have a really big Geddon, like over 300 damage, preferably even higher than that, um, then you, the Geddon comp starts to get faster than the uh, Malkazar version. But if you don't have that big of a Geddon, the Malkazar version is probably your best bet for the farm so far this week. And the uh, Bran Geddon is... It's in the pinned comment under that video from day two. And it's uh, basically the same thing. You just use Bran with Geddon and Gen instead of the extra artillery strike. Alright, sorry, Bran with Geddon and uh, Drek'thar. And you leave Gen on the bench. Right, so we got a attack coming in here. So yeah, that day two strategy is just Drek'thar for Arcane Resist plus whatever two guys you're killing with, and then the Bran version is just Bran and Geddon are your two. Alright, that should do it. So, a little bit of a tedious mean up here, but very safe and easy. There's just that little bit of RNG at the very start of the Whelp Smuggler encounter where if they both do something bad or hit the wrong targets, um, you know, if they both use the Reckless First Flight, that's usually going to kill one of your guys unless they target Bonsomdi. And if they both use a high fire damage ability, they can maybe cause some problems. But usually they'll just hit one guy in the counter rune, so even that's typically survivable. So there you go, 45 turns. Uh, good luck on your run.